Well, hi there. Amphibians are not reptiles. As it turns out, they aren't even close. Uh, you're, you're closer to being a reptile than amphibians are, and we are Clint's reptiles, so amphibians are completely out of place, at least in terms of phylogenetics. Woo! <laughs> but they are really cool. I think they appeal to a lot of the same people that really like reptiles. And a lot of people have been requesting that we review amphibians. <laughs> like most reptiles, amphibians are ectothermic, which means they get their heat from outside of their body, not from the food that they eat. They're very similar in a lot of their care requirements to reptiles, and in a lot of ways they're very similar in appearance. But there are some big differences between amphibians and reptiles. Amphibians are generally much less dependent on lighting than are reptiles. And in many instances, they don't need any sort of lighting at all. They're not ideal for handling due to their permeable skin, and actually for that reason, I'm gonna put him away inside of an enclosure so I don't have to keep repositioning him. Reptiles have an impermeable skin, which means that uh, water and other chemicals don't tend to pass right through their skin very readily. Amphibians are the complete opposite. Almost everything goes through their skin. A lot of them even breathe through their skin. And so you have to be very careful about what they get on their skin, because whatever gets on their skin can get inside of their body. This means that you need to be very careful when handling them, that your hands are very clean and free of any sort of chemicals, even, even things like soap. And you should keep handling to a minimum. It also means that water quality and humidity are very important for amphibians because they can dry out, they can lose things just like they can absorb things. So they could lose a lot of water if there's not enough humidity in the air. And if there are any toxins in the water, that say they're sitting in water, those will go right into their body. And so those are major concerns that you have with amphibians that you don't really run into with reptiles. And all of the amphibians on this list come to us from Animal Ark in Orem, Utah, which is one of the great pet stores in all the world, and I am so grateful that they were able to help us out with these awesome amphibians for this video today. So now that you understand some of the differences between amphibians and reptiles, we want to introduce you to five of the best amphibians you could get. And I'm going to start with this guy, who is one of the largest amphibians in the world, and one of the two largest frogs, at least on Earth right now and that is the African bullfrog, or pixie frog. I have loved these guys since I first discovered that they existed because they are just crazy. I mean, this is, this is a frog that can eat mice and birds and rats and stuff. That's insane. They've got a lot of pros, at least if you ask me, and one of them is their very, very impressive size. When somebody hears you have a frog, they're not imagining something like this. They are colossal. They can get about as big across as a dinner plate, and that is amazing. They also live a very long time for a frog. Uh, generally over 10 years, sometimes uh, over 20 years, which is just forever for a frog. It's awesome. Their enclosure, especially given that this frog is enormous, is actually very simple and affordable. And that is amazing. That, that's largely due to the fact that they're not very active. For the most part, they're going to sit in one place almost all the time. They're also incredibly easy to feed. They eat anything that moves, or that once moved and you could move in front of them. Basically, if they can fit it in their mouth, which it's amazing what they can fit in their mouth, they can eat it. So, really, the only issue there is just, you know, being careful with what you try to feed them and how much of it. Because they will eat. But... There are definitely some cons to owning a giant super frog. One of them is that they're, especially as adults, going to eat primarily rodents and other large charismatic super feeders. And that can be sad. They also might try to eat you. Uh, they eat anything essentially that moves in front of their face. In the wild, these guys just sit in one place and wait for something to walk by them, and then they grab it and swallow it down. And they have these huge kind of fang teeth in the front of their mouth that would hurt a lot if they bit your hand. 
So uh, probably this is the worst bite any frog can give you. It's not going to be that bad, but for a frog bite, it's horrific. They're also not very active, which you wouldn't guess watching this guy because he's doing quite a bit of moving right now, but generally speaking, he might sit in one place just for days on end. Which means that uh, these guys are basically just a giant mouse-eating decoration most of the time. Uh, another con is just going to have to do with their enclosure. You need to keep it wet, but you don't want it to mold. So you need to keep humidity high enough that the frog doesn't dry out, but not so high that you have mold problems, and, and that can be a difficult balance to achieve. In fact, we'll find that with a lot of the amphibians we look at. Next on our list is an amphibian that lives its life almost like a fish, and that is the axolotl. Axolotls are a species of salamander, but they stay in, a, in essentially their larval form for their whole life. They, they mature into adults, but they're still an aquatic gilt larval form, which most salamanders look like that as juveniles, but very few look like that as adults. And that makes them very unusual and very cool. There are a lot of pros to these guys. One of them is their size. I mean, they're, they're big enough that they're, they're very kind of impressive looking animals, but they're small enough that their enclosure is very reasonably sized. They eat a very uh, manageable volume of feeders. They're, they're really very easy pets but it's a really good size for a pet salamander. They also have a very long lifespan for an amphibian. Again, over 10 years, perhaps even considerably longer than that. And that's awesome. The enclosure that you need to keep them in is actually very simple. Keeping humidity balance right for amphibians can be very challenging, but when the amphibian lives underwater, uh, that's 100% humidity all the time, and that's the best thing for them. And, and so essentially you're keeping a fish tank, but a really, really simple one. It needs a kind of a low flow filtration unit. It doesn't usually need any sort of heat. Uh, it doesn't even need substrate. So it's about as easy of a fish tank as you could possibly keep. They're also extremely easy to feed. They'll eat about anything that moves. Uh, of course, you gotta get it to move underwater, but things like worms and fish, be sure not to use goldfish, especially as a staple feeder because they're very high in the enzyme thymine and they need thymine. Thyminease breaks down thymine, so you don't want to use them as a staple feeder, but they will gladly take fish feeders, they'll take insect feeders underwater, they will take worms, uh, just about anything you can get in front of their mouths, they will probably suck it on in. They're basically just a crazy looking cold water fish, and they're also super easy to find, uh, at least for a salamander. These guys are available a lot of places, and that's really cool. There are some cons though. One of them is that you have to maintain a fish tank. We said that was a pro because it's a fairly easy fish tank to keep, but it is still a fish tank. And that means you've got to deal with things like water quality and cycling. You got to deal with filtration units. You don't have to deal with the heater. That was a, a definite pro. But it's essentially a fish tank that only has one animal in it. That's your axolotl because anything else you put in there will get eaten. They will try to eat anything in their enclosure, and that can even include the substrate, so you gotta be really careful not to put any substrate in there that they couldn't pass through their digestive system. No substrate is probably the safest route. As we mentioned, the water quality is really important. Being amphibians, especially a fully aquatic amphibian with gills, they've got high levels of exposure inside their body to what is outside of their body in the water around them. And as a result, keeping that water pristine is very, very important. And, and last of all, and, and this is generally a pro to them, which is that you don't need to heat their water, but they are susceptible to heat stroke and death if the water gets too hot. So if you let your house get very, very warm, you might actually need to put a chiller on the enclosure to keep it cooler because they can't handle really high temperatures. Next on our list, five of the best amphibians you can get is the spotted salamander, which is one of my favorite creatures on the planet. There are a lot of pros to these little guys. One of them is the size of them. They're simultaneously small and large. Like, they're not a very big animal, but it's a pretty good sized salamander. And that means that they're really uh, reasonable in their care requirements. They're not going to eat a ton of food. They don't need a ginormous enclosure. But they're big enough that it's like, wow, look at that salamander. It's not, you know, some salamanders are very, very tiny. There's, in fact, an entire group of salamanders, the largest group of salamanders, that don't have any lungs. 
and they're able to get away with not having any lungs because they're small enough that they can get enough oxygen just through their skin. So they breathe only through their skin. This salamander, compared to those salamanders, is a colossus. This is one of the lunged salamanders, a mole salamander, and they are huge by comparison. They're also very handleable. Again, like any amphibian, you want to keep handling to a minimum and you want to be very careful about how clean your hands are and that they don't have any chemicals on them. I can't say this enough times during this video, but if you're very, very careful, they can be handled extremely sparingly. As I mentioned before, due to their size mostly and their activity level, they're very easy to house. They don't need a very large enclosure. It's not very complex. Just keep that humidity right. Like a lot of amphibians, they eat about anything they can swallow. And these guys, being a terrestrial salamander, are going to be easier to feed than the axolotl because things aren't going to drown when you're trying to feed them. You can throw things in like crickets and dubia roaches, but they also love worms and a lot of the things that other amphibians like. These guys have a smaller head and you got to be careful not to feed them something too large because amphibians are extremely optimistic about what they can swallow. But give them, give them a, a, a modestly sized feeder, these guys are going to eat it. And they'll come right up to you, they'll eat right off of tongs, they potentially eat right out of your hand, which is really fun. They're very, very personable. Like I mentioned, they'll come up and they'll eat right out of your hand. They get to know you and that you mean food, and that they're hiding most of the time, but they'll come right out of their hole and greet you and go, do you have something for me today? They don't say that, but you know that's what they're thinking. And I love these guys, but they do have some cons. Everything has some cons. One of them, and I mentioned this a little bit before, is that they're generally hidden. They're actually going to kind of bury themselves and they'll probably be down in a little hole almost all the time, but they will come out to greet you, so they're not always in there. Again, as is the issue with a lot of terrestrial amphibians, you got to keep humidity high so they don't dry out, but simultaneously you don't want your enclosure to get moldy. And a lot of this is going to come down to the type of substrate and type of decorations that you have in the enclosure that the things that are not prone to molding. One of the biggest issues with these guys for me is that they're virtually impossible to get captive bred. On the upside, these guys are from North America, which means at least if you live in North America, they're not being transported very far, so they come in much better condition than things that are being imported from, say, Africa, or Asia that have gone through just a really brutal trip before they got to you. These guys are not traveling very far. Another thing is in North America, management of wild populations tends to be considerably better than in some other nations. You can rely on the fact that they're probably more reasonably sourced than our other imports, other wild caught imports. So it's not ideal, but for me, it's not a total deal breaker either. Probably the biggest problem with the fact that they're wild caught, other than the fact that you're having some impact on the wild population, is that they have been exposed to nature and parasites and diseases that might be present in nature. So definitely be careful to quarantine them and keep them away, especially from other amphibians, for as long as you really can. But if these aren't a problem for you, spotted salamanders are awesome. Next on our list of five of the best amphibians you can get is the White's Tree Frog, also known as the Dumpy Frog, but that seems demeaning, and frogs hear well, so I like White's Tree Frog for these guys. There are so many pros to these incredible little frogs. One of them is, of course, that they are adorable. I mean, look at these guys. They're one of the cutest frogs in the whole world, and frogs as a group are pretty much all adorable. They're pretty big and robust for a tree frog. One of the larger tree frogs, actually, that you'll see. This one here isn't even fully grown. They get larger than this. So they're a big tree frog. I would still not recommend handling them extensively because of the fact that they can absorb chemicals from your skin right through their skin. But as handling goes for an amphibian, this is as good as it gets. They are great for handling. But again, I would keep that in moderation and I would definitely, definitely, definitely make sure that your hands are very clean and, and totally rinsed free of any chemicals, including soap, before you attempt to handle them, ever. They have a very long lifespan for a tree frog. Again, over 10 years, which is an incredibly long lifespan for a tree frog. Sometimes up over 20 years, so this is a long-lived frog. They also are easy to feed. Amphibians in general tend to be easy to feed, and, and part of this might be because uh, they tend to be ambush predators, and so they often are just sitting in a place waiting for something to walk by and you better not waste time. 
because these are not the kind of animals that run things down. They're about ambush. One quick attack. If it walks outside of your strike zone, it's gone. And so these guys don't mess around. They eat anything that moves. That's going to be worms, a variety of feeder insects. These guys are eating machines. They do well in beautifully decorated enclosures. They're not going to tear the enclosure up like a lot of other animals will. Uh, the enclosure that we built, we've actually got a video right here about how to build a bioactive enclosure. That would be an excellent enclosure for a white tree frog. I'd probably recommend a larger one than the actual enclosure that we used, but all the techniques and materials would be fantastic for a white tree frog. And these guys are very easy to find. They're very easy to find captive bred, which is a wonderful thing. And so you're going to be able to find these guys at pet shops and reptile expos and definitely online. That's terrific keeps the price down as well. These guys do have a few cons. One of them is that they're largely inactive during the day. This is a nocturnal frog, which being nocturnal can be a pro if you're gone during the day, but it also means that if you're around during the day, they're not going to be doing anything. They also have that same problem that you're going to run into with a lot of terrestrial amphibians, which is that you need to keep the enclosure humid, but not so humid that it molts, and that can be a difficult balance to discover. So there are some cons to these guys. They also need regular feedings several times a week uh, and misting. So these things can really kind of tie you down if uh, you're going to leave on vacation or something like that. You probably need somebody to take care of your white street fox. And last, but arguably goofiest on this list, is the budgets frog. I don't even know where to begin with how great these frogs are. I mean, look at that face. They are preposterous. So many pros, in my opinion. Uh, first pro, they're strange. What a weird and magnificent beast. I don't think anybody could see that and not giggle a little bit. In fact, when I first told my, my mom that we were going to do this list, she said, what are you doing next? I said, top five amphibians. And, and she said, what's on the list? And I said, budgets, Froggy. She goes, I've never heard of that. I said, Google it. And Google it while I'm on the phone. And she just laughed. <laughs> for like a minute or two, just laughed and laughed because they're hilarious, but also super hardcore. They're very easy to house. In fact, housing a budget frog is extremely similar to housing an axolotl. It's gonna be a, an aquatic enclosure, no substrate, because again, they'll gobble it all up, and a, a, a filter. One difference is they do need a little bit of a land area, but they're very easy to house. They like, well, kind of like all the amphibians on this list, but even to a more extreme degree, will eat anything that moves. Now that includes other budgets frogs, so don't keep them together. And you'll notice their head is like uh, the widest part of their whole body, which means they can fit something the size of their body in their mouth. So, yeah. you can try to imagine that, but don't, don't like have them actually perform this act in real life. It's probably not good for their health, but they will seriously eat another budget frog their own size. They're crazy. They have a very long lifespan. Actually, all the amphibians on this list live a long time for an amphibian. Over 10 years, which is a long time for a frog or a salamander, and that's awesome. These guys also have a modest but considerable size. I mean, they're not a huge frog, but they've got an enormous head, which makes them seem really quite large. And I don't know, they're just amazing. How could you not love this thing? There are some cons. Uh, like the axolotl, you're keeping a fish tank, so you got all the hassle of keeping a fish tank, except you can't keep any fish in there because your frog will eat them all. It also, and this is different from a typical fish or even the axolotl, is they do need an area where they can get out of the water, which means that it's a little bit more complex of a fish tank than you typically associate with a fish tank. Because these guys take so much in through their skin, you've just got to be really careful about the quality of the water in their aquarium all the time. The temperature also matters. These guys will probably need a water heater, whereas you didn't need that with the axolotl, you probably will need that with a budgets frog. They're also very messy beasts. You need kind of a low flow filter, but it's got to be a pretty good one because you've got to keep that water clean and they like to make a mess. These guys are best not to handle. Uh, no amphibian is great for handling, but these guys would be one probably not to handle at all, except when you need to move it out of the enclosure for cleaning or something like that. And it's just as well because they would probably try to eat you if you stuck your fingers in the water with them, because that's how they roll. These can also be a little bit difficult to find. Probably one of the more difficult amphibians on this list, though 
in general, this list is full of amphibians that are out there and are available. So if you look online, even possibly at expos, you're probably gonna be able to find yourself a budget frog. Amphibians are not reptiles, and there are definitely some differences, but there are some really cool amphibians out there. They definitely appeal to me in a very similar way to the way that reptiles always touch my heart. Put little faces on these guys. The the ease of care, I mean once once you get care right, the maintenance level on the amphibian is very, very reasonable and they are just a lot of fun. Hopefully, we've been able to show you a few of the great options. Of course, there are a lot more cool amphibians than this, and a lot of great reptiles. So we're gonna keep covering other reptiles, and probably, especially if you guys like this, even more amphibians in the future. So definitely, make sure that you like and subscribe, click the little bell, so you get a notification each time a new video comes out, perhaps about some rad amphibian, or some sort of a reptile, Maybe we'll even start covering dinosaurs in the near future. And we hope to see you real soon. And thank you so much to our patrons at Patreon! This is something This is something people don't realize about the iguana video in all of our videos, is uh, these sorts of animals are not that scary until they're chest height and you are trapped in here because I cannot get out of this seat. <laughs> it takes me 10 to 15 seconds to get out of this seat. So if things go awry, I'm stuck here battling them like this. <laughs> this scared me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, well, I mean, well, it'll look basically like what he's doing everywhere right now. Hey, there you go. I don't know why you're so interested in doing this. Oh, 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 I really don't want to handle you any more than is necessary. But uh, you crawled out of your container. So now it's frog hold in time. All right, stay good frog. Hooray! Hooray! Oh gosh, you're scared me. It worked! Are they the ones that they like puff up and they like throw their butt in the air? Which ones? Scream, this frog you're talking about? Well, lots of frogs do that. There's a frog we that's, had. That's the main way I defend myself, and it's amazing. <laughs> it is amazing how well that works. Like, Can you it, demonstrate for us? Well, I can't. Not not from this position. I'd have to get on the table. But if, you've, <laughs> if you're ever surrounded... Please. If you're ever surrounded by a, a, a group of angry-looking armed people that look like they mean to do you harm, and you just get on all fours, throw your butt up in the air, and start screaming, <laughs> they tend to leave you alone. Yeah. Oh, wow. It is amazing how well crazy works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh-oh. Hi. I'm going to turn you a wee the bit. The holes. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Whoa. Really I want to face that, that way. Just let him face that way. <laughs> yeah.